Hey guys, in this video, I want to give you a quick inside look at the MCAT study plan spreadsheet that I used while I was studying for the MCAT. Many of my private tutoring students have asked to see this, and the few that I have shown it to have found it pretty helpful in knowing how I prepared for the MCAT, which in turn helped them know how they could adjust their studying to better prepare for the MCAT. Keep in mind though, that this MCAT study plan spreadsheet is very, very basic compared to the new MCAT study plan spreadsheet that we have for all of the MCAT self prep students. Our new study plan spreadsheet has way more awesome features, such as the ability to convert your percent correct on AMC practice problems into a scaled MCAT score, the ability to determine how many hours you should study depending on how many points you need to improve your MCAT score by, and finally the ability to track the amount of hours you've studied and how many more hours you need to study in order to achieve your goal score. So if you want to get access to that more advanced study plan spreadsheet, I definitely recommend going to MCATSelfPrep.com, getting started with the MCAT Launchpad, and then doing our Create Your Own Study Plan course. So, without further ado, let's dive into my MCAT study plan spreadsheet. First of all, I have my scores on full length exams. And the reason I put this first is because, because I felt like the scores I was getting on my practice exams should dictate how I should study. I should use my results from practice exams to help me know how to gauge and focus my studying. And so you can see here that on my first practice exam, uh, I did the AMC um, unscored practice exam and I got 76% correct, which I had no idea if that was good or bad. I just kind of took it and thought it was, you know, a good way to get an idea of what the test is like. And so it kind of gave me a gauge of where I should be going. And then from there, um, that was in September. And I took another one in January and I moved my score up to 83% on the next AMC practice exam that I took. So I felt like I was making improvements. And then I started doing some Kaplan full lengths once I reached April. This is kind of when I started my final phase of MCAT studying where I did started doing two full lengths per week. And that's what I now call MCAT boot camp. And then finally, right before test day, I took the AMC press exam scored one, and my overall score was a 525. So I felt pretty comfortable moving in to take the exam. Something that I didn't know then was that the percent correct you get on practice problems is not actually very important. It's much, much more important what scaled score you get because that's the only number they're going to report to you on test day. When you get your score report back, they're not going to tell you what percent of the problems you got right or wrong. They're just going to tell you if you got a 118 or a 132, right? And so this wasn't super helpful necessarily to keep track of my percent corrects, but it was the best I knew how to do at the time. Now with the new study plan spreadsheet, like I said before, you can convert these percent corrects on AMC practice problems into a scaled MCAT score, which gives you a much better indicator of where you're actually at and gives you a much better indicator of where you need to improve and where you should focus your time. In this next section of my study plan spreadsheet, I kept track of the percent corrects that I got on AMC practice problems throughout the entire study process. And notice that I started doing practice problems 26 weeks before my exam even started. And that's still what I recommend doing. You definitely want to start doing AMC practice problems from the get-go because that's going to give you a better indicator of what the exam's like and help you focus your studying around your results. And what I did was I just did about 10 practice problems per day from the AMC question packs, section banks, and flashcards. What I have students do now though is I have them take what are called AMC mini exams at the end of each content module that basically act as a miniature MCAT. It's like a third length exam that has all four sections and I basically created these four sections using question pack, section bank, and AMC flashcard questions. So it's covering the same problems. I just made them into mini MCAT, so it feels much more like you're actually taking the MCAT rather than just doing 10 questions randomly each day. And so I like the new approach a lot better, but this is kind of the best I knew how. And notice that my weekly averages on these practice problems started in the 60s and 70 percents, and then over time, closer to my test date, I got closer to you know, low 90s, high 90 percents on these practice problems. So even though it's not as accurate as a estimate as you get now with our new score tracker that converts your percent correct into a scaled MCAT score, this still gave me a pretty good ind indicator if I was improving or not. So I felt like it was helpful for me. This next section is where I kept track of my progress through the Kaplan MCAT books. And originally these all would have been blank. And then what I would do is as I finished a chapter, I would just write in the chapter number. And notice that on the far right, that would kind of calculate what percent of the book I had finished by that point. And this was good enough for me to keep track of my progress with the Kaplan books. Now we have a much more advanced system in the new spreadsheet for kind of keeping track of your progress through our content modules. But this was good enough for me at this time. And during the content review phase, 
I didn't really feel like I would benefit from a day-by-day -day study plan, especially because my studying spanned over a couple of semesters when I really didn't have a lot of time to study each week. And so I would just kind of study in between moments throughout the day when I had a chance to flip open the Kaplan book and continue where I left off. So for me, my plan was more just study when I can, continue where I left off, and just kind of track my progress over time. But now with the new MCAT study plan spreadsheet, you can do that. Plus, you can also kind of have a day-by-day -day study plan where you track the hours of studying you're doing, and it'll calculate the total hours you've studied over time and give you a much better indicator of how many hours you have left to study in order to reach your goal, which I find is much more effective in giving you a clear indicator of how close you are to achieving success, right? But for me, this was the best I knew how at the time, and it worked for me. This final section is where I mapped out my detailed plan for the final couple months of MCAT studying. I call this final phase of studying MCAT boot camp now. Um, for me, it was almost two months, but usually I recommend doing it in one month, studying 10 hours per day, totaling about 300 hours. Um, basically, the, the general gist of MCAT boot camp is still the same, where each week you do two full-length practice exams, and in between practice exams, you review all the flashcards that you created during the content review phase. And I found this to be very effective for me because during the final month, you want to build up stamina, you want to get better at full-length practice exams, and you also want to have one last quick review of everything you already learned, right? I feel like there's a really effective way to conduct your final month of MCAT studying. And so what I did here is I just kind of kept track of which note card stacks I had kind of finished reviewing. And I also kept track of some extra practice problems that I wanted to do during this time when I wasn't doing full-length practice exams. I also had this little list of little things that I hadn't quite gotten to during the content review phase that I needed to brush up on real quick. And so I found it effective for me to kind of keep track of how much I had done and how much I had left in this little area here. And right here I have a little table that kind of tracked my progress through the Khan Academy videos. Originally I didn't know about the Khan Academy videos, so I wasn't working on those. I found out about them during my final couple months of MCAT studying, so I threw them in at that point. So I kind of used this table to kind of keep track of which video playlists I had already watched. Keep in mind that all these video playlists are now built into our free MCAT prep course at MCATSelfPrep.com, so really no need to have this kind of table in your spreadsheet. Um, it's just what I used when I was studying for the MCAT. And finally, during my final few weeks of studying, I went back and revisited some other practice problems. I tried some of the Khan Academy practice problems, but I didn't really find them to be super effective. Um, they've got passages as well as standalone questions, but I just felt like there was a big disconnect between the videos they created and the practice problems. And I think most students who score well in the MCAT would agree with that as well. I also did some last minute AAMC practice questions over again. Uh, a lot of students really like to redo the AAMC section bank questions. And I think that's also a great thing to do during the final month of MCAT studying. Well, I hope that gave you a good idea of my basic MCAT study plan spreadsheet that I used while I was studying for the MCAT. Be sure to watch the next video to see an inside look at the new MCAT study plan spreadsheet that we have that I think you're going to enjoy a lot more than this one. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. And for more MCAT tips, be sure to subscribe to this channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. And if you are really looking to take your MCAT score to the next level, feel free to visit my tutoring profile page and request a free 10-minute phone consultation. I would love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. I look forward to speaking with you soon, and we'll see you next time.